then. Hi everybody, it's Lisa with Shabby Time Boutique and I have a project share for you today. Um, I'm pretty new at all of this as you know and I am developing my craft room. It's an ongoing process just like everyone else's is. Um, anyway, I, f I found that I we transformed a bedroom uh, into my craft room and I found that I was in need of a clock. I kept wanting to just look up from my work to a clock instead of reaching over and finding my phone and turning it on and I didn't want a big wall clock because I want to use as much wall space as possible. So one day when I was in Salvation Army, I found this little clock, and it's about, oh, maybe eight inches high by five inches across. It's just, it wasn't very cute, and let me show you a picture. It was really, really, really black. So all of this here was, this is just a picture that I took before I realized that I should take a, a before and after picture. <laughs> um, this black paint was the entire clock, so it was covering the top. It has a handle here to lift it up. It was covering all of the face of the clock, the sides, the underside, and the other side, and the back. This piece right here is a piece of felt, which is really nice. Um, I ended up not changing that because I really liked it. And so I thought, I can do something with that. So the next thing, of course, was to see if the clock worked, and it did. I was just amazed. There was even a battery still in it that was working. So someone must have just said, oop, I'm done with this, and got rid of it. I think I got it for 3 or $4.00. And um, I want to share with you what I did with it. So the first thing I did, it obviously, as you can see from this picture, is I took it all apart. Um, this piece here fits on the top of the clock here, and it had screws, so I unscrewed it. Um, this piece had screws also. Uh, unscrewed those in the back plastic part. Uh, it's just a cheapo piece, <laughs> in my opinion, um, battery operated, and it popped completely out of the frame. So that was really nice, because a lot of the clocks that you do find in the thrift stores, you can't remove this piece. And so I popped that out, got my sandpaper out, and completely sanded it down. The, you can tell what I did here. And then this piece, um, the lid, you can see it still has a lot to go on it. It's beveled. The wood is beveled. Uh, so it's beveled on the top and it's beveled along the bottom and around. And so that was kind of a challenge for me. Um, I have, you know, arthritis, as many of you know, and so it was a little difficult to put continuous pressure to do that. Well, subsequent to that, and of course it's always after the fact, right? I found this little sandpaper doohickey, and pardon it, it's torn right now. I have to fix, put a new piece in there. Um, I tried to sand something you shouldn't sand. But it fits right in the palm of your hand, and you just go for it. Um, it's a Tim Holtz ideology. And I found that on clearance at Joann's, so that was a find, let me tell you. So now I'm ready for the next project that needs it. Um, okay, so the bottom line is, is I went ahead and I sanded everything down that I could. And then I decided what I wanted to do with it. Actually, let me tell you. Most of my projects are in the middle of the moment saying, oh, I think I would like this instead of that. So I start out with a general idea, but then partway through, and it's usually sooner rather than later, 
the entire idea changes. And I don't know if you're that way, but I'm that way. And sometimes it really drives me crazy because I feel like I'm swimming in an unknown, you know, pond or lake or whatever. But the end result I'm usually very pleased with. And that's because, and I want to really encourage you all about this, is I may start out with an idea from a picture I saw that somebody else did. And I like that picture. I like what it, you know, shows me. I may like the color combination or I may like the laces that were used. But then when I just start letting myself hold up pieces of lace, like, oh, do I like this piece here or here or whatever, do I like this flower instead of that flower, then I'm allowing my own creativity to come through. And that's why I usually like the end product, because I'm not trying to mimic somebody else. Use your own ideas, because your ideas are awesome. Um, and like I said, it may not happen until partway through the project, but at least it happens. That's the important thing. Okay, so let me show you what I did with this uh, little piece of wonderfulness that I found. And it's going to be a little bit weird because it's a three-dimensional object and I'm pointing the camera downward. But I'm going to lay it down here. on, And I have to put something underneath it because it um, of the light glaring on the okay let me back this up a little bit oops wrong ones. there we go now you might have seen this on my pictures on my shabby time boutique website uh, either on Facebook or on my Etsy shop because I'm I like it it's part of who I am and I wanted it to be part of my branding so anyway here it is I put it together, um, put it put it back together after I crafted it. So let me just show you what I started with. First I started with painting the entire thing pink, one of my favorite colors. So the entire thing is painted pink. Underneath everything, the only thing I didn't paint um, is the back and I didn't do anything with the clock piece because this was intended to be a functional piece for my craft room if I was going to do something uh, in order to sell it I would have probably decorated the back a different way in fact I know I would have <laughs> okay so painted the whole thing first and I did not like the chrome handle so I kind of painted that and left it just did one coat and left it shabby because I like the shabbiness of the paint on the chrome. Uh, some of it's come off over time because I grab it right here and so it but that's okay for me. Um, then I chose some paper and I really 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 like this paper it's so beautiful. And I think I got this out of the perfectly pink paper pad. Um, measured, you know, measured, measured the circle. That was a challenge, let me tell you. <laughs> I cut out the center. Anyway, yeah, so I put paper here. And that is the only place I put it. I didn't put any on the back. The back just stayed plain pink, like I said, except for down at the bottom. And then I decorated it with some bling along the edge. And this was just that uh, peel and stick stuff. Uh, over time, this stuff might lift off. The, the bling might lift off. And so you can either glue it down or you can just keep pushing it back into place. <laughs> it's up to you. Um, on the sides I used strips. These are, it's bought by the yard and these are I think um, 
I want to say chiffon or I used a strip of four flowers and they're only about maybe an inch and a half across they have these little pretty pearls in the center and the back this lace right here and the I don't know if you can see the the netting the tool so the tool and the lace backing are part of this strip and I got these on eBay and they're beautiful. The, the, I didn't really like them um, on the picture on eBay but when I got them they're so soft and see I just can't stop petting them. <laughs> and they're so beautiful. Um, so I put those on either side like so and then uh, around the bottom I used some beautiful lace trim that has the satin it's a double lace underneath and there's the painting you can see I painted all under there and again it's shabby I only did one coat so you could still see some of the wood through it I really like it and then in the center here at the bottom oops sorry at the center let's see if that'll focus um, I put uh, uh, some mulberry paper flowers and some pearls some stamen and some tulle and then this little key bling that I found I did that I put a die cut butterfly here that I painted a light lavender because I wanted something that would offset all the pinks that's my thinking behind it. Um, oh, I ran a strip of beading all the way around. And then up here at the top, let me set it up. Can you see that? The light's not that great, is it? There, how's that? Okay. At the top, um, I put more of the pink and white roses and then I dusted the white roses with a little bit of pink ink I just wanted that look you can see it better right here so I dusted the leaves and stuff I'm not very proficient with that yet but I'm learning um, so I put some more beading all the way around it and I put some roses in the back I didn't do the pearls in the back because again like I said this is just for me and it's a functional piece. Then I tied, um, oh, on the corners, I put some beautiful lace that I have just on the corners so that they hang down. There's the other one. And then I put, you can see the same style as down in the bottom center so that it all blends together. I did the pink and white and the tulle and the stamen. And then there's these little bling pink flowers peeking through. It was off of this strip, so uh, I didn't want to waste them. And I thought, oh, the colors match, so I'll stick them in there somewhere. Right? And then I used some big pearls, and you notice uh, I used the rule of threes, so I have three pinks and... Oh, maybe I didn't. I got two whites. <laughs> but I have the three pearls here and two more pearls and the two big pearls. And then I surrounded the big... Oh, I'm sorry. I surrounded the big pearls with smaller pearls. So this is all hot glued on. I tied some tulle onto the handle and stuck some beaded spray down into the back, just into the back flower set because I like the way it's stuck up there. And then I took a pretty little picture that I liked um, and put it into a metal... Oh, there, that's better. You can see it. I put it into a little metal frame. I didn't do anything with the frame. And then I stuck it down in there and glued it to the handle. So... I think that's 
pretty much it. Like I said, I left the felt on the bottom. Um, it's really soft and nice, and it won't scar or scar <laughs> mar anything. And um, yeah, there's my project share. I hope you like it. I uh, I really didn't know that it was going to come out like this, but I am just absolutely thrilled with the way it did come out. And again, like I said, you can take anything you find, and if you want it, get it, if you can afford it. I mean, this was only three or four dollars from the thrift store. And you can undo it. I mean, I'm not a, um, what do you call it? A carpenter. That's what comes to my mind when I think of sanding. I think of all those big power tools, right? And uh, all the loud sounds. You can tell I have a two and a half year old grandson, right? <laughs> He's like, Nana, Nana, Anon, Anon. And he calls cars Anons. And Anons came about because he thought that was the sound they make. Anon, Anon. <laughs> So it's very cute. In my world, it's cute anyway. I hope you got a little chuckle out of it. Uh, but yeah, I would encourage you. If you have a project that you're working on uh, and you come to a place where you think, oh, I don't like this, I, I don't like the way it's going, then stop a little bit. Take a break from it. Come back to it. And then get out some laces or some uh, bling or some other things, appliques that you haven't seen or used in a while. And just hold it up. Try different things. It, this one part right here probably took me uh, a few hours not to put in, but to decide how I wanted it to look. So... I do that a lot. I don't have the gift and ability to see it in my head. I have to see it in 3D in order to decide if I like it or not, or to see what it looks like. And you can imagine my poor husband when we wanted to get our flooring redone. <laughs> uh, we went to the store and he was like, well, which one do you like? I'm like, are you kidding me? I can't tell from this. I have to see it on the floor. So we got a guy to come out with these ginormous flooring samples. And bless his heart, he laid them out on the floor for me so that I could see them. All the different ones. I mean, first we narrowed down the colors, right? <laughs> and, but it wasn't until I actually saw it in my house and held it up under the chairs and under the kitchen sink and in the bedroom by where I get out of bed in the morning and <laughs> so forth. The, when I saw it, I knew it. And I said, that's the one. And they're both like, Rich and the guy from the flooring place was like, are you sure? That's kind of dark. I'm like, yeah, that's the one. I want that one. So... That's the one we got, and it just came out gorgeous. And everybody, including my husband, has admitted to it. You made the right choice. So my point in all that is not to brag, but to tell you, trust your instincts. If you like something and other people are saying, eh, don't, you know, you might consider it this way, um... You could consider it that way, and if you like it, then go with it. But if you don't like it, just say, okay, well, thank you for your input, and I'm going to try it some more a different way till I get what I know is the one. Um, oh, I just wanted to point something out before I leave you, and that is, look at right, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can. See right in here? where the paper is warping or bubbling. See right there? Okay, that's something that came about not because I'm amazing or anything, but because I made a mistake. And the paper didn't lay the way that I had thought I cut it. 
But when it laid down like that and it wrinkled, I was like, oh my gosh, I can never get that effect in a million years if I wanted to. So it makes it look older, it makes it look fun, and it makes it look unique. So anyway, I hope you like my project share. Um, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you like my channel. This is just the beginning, folks.